Now let's have our users provide an email and let them log in using it or their username. Let's start like we always do, by adding the property to our user class with some doctrine annotations. Next, generate or write a getter and a setter for the new property. As a reminder, I'll use the doctrine generate entities command to do this. That little dash dash no backup prevents the command from creating a little backup version of the file. You're using version control, so we don't need to be overly cautious. You are using version control, right? Next, update the database schema to add the new field. Finally, update the fixture so that each user has an email. Reload everything to refresh the database. When a user logs in right now, the security system queries for it using the username field. That's because we told it to in our security.yaml configuration. We could change it here to be email instead, but there's no way to say email or username. We can make this more flexible, but first we need to learn about doctrine repositories. Find an open user repository. This is a doctrine repository, and it was generated for us. Every entity has its own repository class, and it knows that this is the repository class for user because of an annotation on that class. Repositories are where query logic should live. We could create methods like findActiveUsers, which would query the database for users that have a value of 1 for the isActive field. And actually, we've already begun using repositories in our project. Open up Event Controller and check out the index action method. To query for events, we call getRepository on the Entity Manager. The getRepository method actually returns an instance of our very own event repository. But when we open up that class, it's empty. So where does the findAll method live? The answer is Doctrine's base entity repository class, which we're extending. If we open it, you'll find some of the helpful methods that we talked about in the previous screencast, including findAll. So every repository class comes with a few helpful methods to begin with. To prove that getRepository returns our event repository, let's override the findAll method and just die to see if our code is triggered. And when we go to the events page, our page gives us an epic cry. Now open up the event entity. Above the class, you'll see an at ORM entity annotation. Aha! The repository class is what's telling Doctrine to use event repository. Let's remove that part and see what happens. When we refresh, there's no epic cry. In fact, everything works perfectly. We didn't tell Doctrine about our custom repository, so when we call getRepository in the controller, it just gives us an instance of the base entity repository class. That was nice. Our overridden findAll method is bypassed and the real one is used. Let's undo our damage by re-adding the repository class option and remove the dummy findAll method. So every entity has its own repository with helpful methods like findAll for returning objects of that type. And when those shortcut methods won't work, we'll add our own methods. All of our query logic should live inside repositories. It'll make your life much more organized later.